Hotepu, everyone. Today I wish to walk you through a decoding of a series of stars that were very, very pivotal to the ancient Kamau. Here we have the inside of a coffin lid from ancient Kemet, ancient Egypt, that shows a series of constellations. This male figure here is Orion, what they call Sahu. This female figure here in blue is Canis Major, the big dog, which contains the star Sirius, shown by the goddess Ast. And on this side here we have this leg of a bull, which has seven stars representing the Big Dipper. And here we have an image of the goddess Newt, the queen of astrology and the heavens themselves. Okay, so this was inside of a coffin, which means the person was clearly dead. And it meant that just because you were so-called dead, that you were not necessarily unconscious. Just your physical body was no longer working, but your other levels of subtle bodies were still aware. Also, these coffin texts were used when they would put a living initiate who's going through the trials of initiation into a coffin to face his own mortality. And while he, was, he or she was in that coffin, they would be reading and meditating upon the texts inside the coffin and it's lid. So, what's happening here? All right. This, to me, is a very beautiful text about the love between the living and the dead, between you and your grandmother and your great-grandfather and your great-great-great-grandparent, etc. Okay. Now, let's go into this image very quickly. This image is part of the northern constellations here, meaning this side of the map. But this shows Taurt, which means Big Mama, what they call Draco in modern astrology. Here we have that bull again. And here we have Heru, or Anher, one of Heru's warrior forms. What's happening in these scenes? Okay. First of all, in this image here, which is the Big Dipper, Mesketu, and this is the same constellation, Mesketu, the Big Dipper, but they called it the bull's thigh, the bull's leg. These seven stars of this constellation and this one, which are the same, correspond to the god Set. Set represents your bad DNA, your negative character traits, your bad karmas that are inherent in your chart, in your destiny. And so it is always shown, this constellation in Egypt, as either a leg of a bull or an incomplete animal. The key is incomplete. These stars of the Big Dipper correspond to your incompletions. You and your ancestors defer dreams, their unfulfilled dreams and desires. Everyone has dreams on earth to do or be something. And you either make it or you don't, or you make it partially and it's not fully fulfilled, and then you have to go to the West or die with the dream unfulfilled. Where do those broken dreams go to? Where do those unfinished desires go to? They go to the Big Dipper. The Big Dipper energies spiritually absorb humans' incompletions. The word mesketu is composed of two words, Mes, which means birth. Ketu. Ketu means burning things, things that are aflame. So mes ketu means the rebirth of my burning desires, my flaming passions, 
unfulfilled, that your flaming unfulfilled passions and dreams will be reborn through you. They're going to come back. And it was said that Set was the god of iron, which we'll touch upon in this scene here, this thing called the Peshenkef, the adds. See the word adds here? A tool for opening the mouth of the ancestors. It is basically a symbolic version of the bull's thigh. You see here the bull's thigh, and here's the instrument for opening the mouth of iron. Very self-similar. But this instrument was always made of iron, always. Because iron belonged to Set, the bull's thigh is Set's thigh as a bull, meaning materialist. And the iron was often what's called meteorite iron. Meteoric iron has a higher nickel content, about 12% more nickel than iron in the earth. So it represented something falling from the sky, something setian falling from the sky. Now iron is highly magnetized. You can charge it to magnetize, to become like a needle, for example, for a compass. So what are they saying through all these layers of science and genetics? They're saying that your unfulfilled desires, your dreams deferred, will have a magnetic pull pulling you back to Set's world, the earth, the material world, to a new body. If you don't complete yourself, if you die with a bunch of unfinished dreams, unfinished business, you're going to be pulled magnetically through that unrealized dream to come back to earth and try again. It's like having to repeat eighth grade. You have to repeat it. You have to finish it out. You can't go on until you finish it out. Now, here we have Taurt, Big Mama, who was Draco, the dragon stars, but we called it Big Mama, the great hippo. She's shown pregnant, holding this rope chain to the thigh, controlling it, its motions. She's checking it. Ta'ur represents the pole of the ecliptic, which is located at her breast, at her nipple, which is not shown here, but she does have one. And she's guarding this pole here with this chain. She's securing it, and she's securing your bad DNA from getting out of hand. So the pole of the ecliptic is what? It's really, if you put a stick through the center of the sun, vertically, that would be a pole. So it's the center of the zodiac, the center of the 12 signs of Aries, Taurus, Gemini, etc. Their common center is what she guards. Therefore, she controls or guards or nurtures the center of the sun, the center of the zodiac ecliptical signs. The ecliptic is simply the line the sun traces throughout the sky from our point of view. So Big Mama is controlling the center of your zodiac, which is your karma, your destiny, your chart. And the center of the sun, of course, is the hottest part. There's a lot of life force there, a lot of energy there. Like a woman birthing is exerting vast amounts of her energy to give life to that child. So Big Mama is saying that she is in control of the core of your destiny, the core of your life's energy. And out of her love, she controls your bad DNA from getting too rampant. She controls it with this chain, the bad DNA being this bull of Set, the god of bad DNA evil and entropic bad habits. Okay? Now, here we come to the storyline, the plot. Orion here, on the other hand, on the other side of the sky here, really by the right angle, 
this is the east rising stars. This will be the northern stars that really don't set very much. These represent your complete ancestors. Those people in your lineage, your tree of life, your family tree of life, I should say, in your family tree, who were righteous people, enlightened people, good people, who lived the great spiritual and worldly life. They are those Africans who went through all their initiations, all the rites of passages, and fulfilled the duties to their inner spirit and to their family and community. Those ancestors are absorbed into Orion constellation. Of what we call Osar, or the West is called Osiris. So we're seeing here those ancestors that got it right, that lived a spiritual and materially luxurious life. They had a wonderful inner life, a wonderful outer life, what we call Nefertiti, doubly beautiful. And here we have the ancestors that missed the mark. Now, the fact of the matter is, both of their DNA flow through you. You have the DNA to various degrees of your negative ancestors and of your great ancestors. So here we see Sahu Orion, the enlightened ancestors, looking back to the poor souls that were incomplete. Meaning that the Enlightened ancestors, the complete ancestors, realize the link, the unity between themselves, their future children, and their past ancestors. And what is Orion doing looking back? He's saying, I, as symbol of all the completed, fulfilled ancestors, will look back and care for you. I will look back to the north. The north is a place of great evil in Kemetic astrology. The north is the land of the flooded ones, those who are flooded, Mehet. The swamps, Mehet means swamps, flooded area. The north was a very dark, evil place to the Kamau. As their stars show with all these vicious gods and goddesses that rule the north. So he's saying, I will not let you sink. I will throw a lifeboat to you. I will help you. So these ancestors actually will pray for these ancestors. The enlightened ancestors will care about the deferred dreams, unfulfilled hopes and wishes of the incomplete ancestors. So what you're seeing here is a feedback loop between the great ancestors and those who didn't quite make it. It's a beautiful story of leaving no one behind, of making sure that you understand that you are connected. You are linked to your chain of ancestry. In fact, that's why Taurt queen of rebirth or reincarnation in this case of your chart. She's the center of your sun or the chart, the sun signs. This chain is your DNA link. What she's showing here in this DNA molecule here, symbolized by a chain, is that your bad ancestors are linked to your ecliptic, to your sun, to your sun signs and to your life force. And after you become enlightened and after you get your act together and you pull yourself together, you have a duty to go back particularly to those ancestors who were trying to become good, trying to evolve, but just didn't quite make it for whatever reason. They could have been sick. They could have been injured. They could have been just not very sharp, but they were trying. That you want to go back, look back at them and say, I have not forgotten you. And with my enlightened powers, I will do what I can to help. You see? Because you will learn. You cannot separate from your people. And this dynamic of the Sahu Orion complete ancestors 
looking back, giving a helping hand, keeping their eye on the incomplete ancestors is key to comedic ancestral ceremonies. It is this dynamic and this coffin lid of this love between the enlightened ones and the ones not quite so enlightened distinguishes comedic ancestor ceremonies versus let's say Egungu, which is the Yoruba ancestors. They may have a similar intent, but the methodology is quite different. So in the Golden Beetle ancestral tradition, when we do ancestor ceremonies, we have to invoke this lid, invoke these stars. And through these stars, we do the ceremonies. And this image here, the opening of the mouth adds, which again is made of iron, which is what magnetizes you back, pulls you back to your unfulfilled flaming passions, misgets you the flaming things reborn. Here we see a scene of Heru opening the mouth of an ancestor with the same ads you see here. So in effect, Heru was holding the Big Dipper stars saying, these stars, I want you to, I want the ancestor shown here to open his mouth, speaking to me about the dreams deferred, about whatever is inside this iron tool. Speak to me of my ancestors who were trying but didn't make it, who strove to become enlightened but didn't quite cut it. What are their needs? What did they not finish? Tell me. And then this Osar ancestor here who was completed will look back to the north, is able to spiritually read his ancestors in completions in this constellation for his lineage and tell you. This ancestor can also tell you about your unfulfilled dreams and how you are living a life in such a way where you're not going to finish your job, finish your work on earth. They will warn you that you are on a path or not of incompletion of dying unfulfilled eventually. So all of your incompletions, think of all of your dreams unfulfilled, all of your hopes and wishes that have fallen by the wayside for whatever reason. Those things, those broken dreams are going to go somewhere. They won't disappear. You can't just forget them. They will go into your subconscious mind through the Big Dipper stars. They will absorb here in these seven stars. Okay, so the goal here is to realize in this image, as we see here, you're part of your family. You've got rotten people, middling people, and really advanced, advanced souls in your lineage. And in these little children here are parts of their mother and father as well as parts of their grandmother and grandfather. You see it's pouring through. So perhaps grandmas or grandpas, unfinished business, unfulfilled dreams, went into their children, or the parents' unfulfilled dreams, hopes and desires, burning passions unfulfilled, will pour into their, their children. But you want to get to the point of what are they? What are they? What are these things that I'm having in me, these strange interests and habits? Where are they coming from? And what is their true intent? If someone is alcoholic, you might be absorbing a bad habit, a bad DNA from your lineage that's contributing to that behavior of escapism, of not wanting to face reality, not being strong enough to face life's challenges head on. It's a kind of cowardice. So where did that come from? And what's behind this cowardice? It's because you don't know who you are. You didn't finish initiation because if you finished initiation, you would know you're a divine being. 
perfect, whole, and complete, able to manifest whatever you need to in time with meditation. So you can see, okay, behind great-great-grandfather's alcoholism, i.e. cowardice, was the fact he didn't know who he was spiritually. Therefore, he thought that life got him, that it overwhelmed him. But how can you overwhelm the supreme being within you? It's impossible. So the cowardice alcoholism's positive intent is to find out its true inner strength, which is the divine flowing through that person. So now, part of a modern person's alcoholism problems must include liberating that ancestor from that false belief that he's not a divine being, that life can knock him out, therefore he needs to drink to numb it all. This is a very profound implication of what I'm saying about fi fixing family issues, fixing your problems. Many of your problems come not just from you, but from your set DNA, from the North Star, the, the Big Dipper constellation. So you may fix yourself, but if you don't fix your ancestors, have you really fixed yourself? No, because you are chained to them. You are linked on this DNA chain. So I pray you enjoyed this. And what we do in these trainings, this series of images are taught in greater depth to the members of the Golden Beetle, which is the spiritual training system that I have developed. And we go into exactly how to find out what these issues are in your lineage, why you have a certain way about you, good or bad, why certain problems keep repeating, why you have luck over here and no luck over there. Maybe you're lucky in money, but horrible in love. We trace it back to your family tree. And you learn the actual words of power and the actual simple ceremonies to cause your ancestors to unclutch from their negative habits. We do certain ceremonies to these stars, these seven stars of the Big Dipper, particularly the four bowl stars. These four stars here are very key, called the four sons of Heru. Heru is the hero. And these four stars of Heru are the grandsons of Orion. So the North Star links to Orion through a genetic connection of grandfather to grandsons. Finally, I'll mention about Sirius here and about Heru here. Sirius, this is not Sirius, this is Canis Major. And Heru is actually Sirius. Many comedic people think that Sirius is Ast. But actually Sirius is Heru. Canis Major, which is the constellation that contains Sirius, is Ast. So this big dog, Canis Major constellation called Ast, represents the nourishment of Heru or Sirius. It represents the meditations and the spiritual yogas that strengthen Sirius, called Sopedu. Canis Major is called Sopedet. Sirius called Sopedu. And Sirius represents your chakras, the seven great chakras. Canis Major, Sopedet, represents the meditations you must do to give them life, to awaken them, how the mother nourishes the child. So you learn all these things in membership classes. And those of you who are interested in membership, you can just click here, enroll anytime. It's always open to people, no matter your race, gender, sexuality, it doesn't matter. Open to all people. And you'll learn these techniques these teachings. I pray you enjoyed this. I pray that you unclutch from your bad habits by helping your ancestors unclutch from their bad habits. I pray that you become an Osar Orion, an enlightened being on earth, and through your enlightenment love, help those within your kin lines who tried but couldn't reach to reach the heights of heaven.
dwell in Hotepu. 